So today I'm greeted with two brothers who would like to introduce themselves. Hey guys, um, now I'm Francisco Guerrero. Everybody in the fraternity calls me Panchito. Uh, yeah. I'm Jared Meyer. I'm, everyone calls me Jared. What's your major, Jared? I am mechanical engineering. What's your major, Panchito? I am an animal science pre with a biology and chemistry minor. And what made you want to join Delta Chi, Panchito? Honestly, what made me join was like... I went to their first event, their first event being, no, not their first event, I went to like their third event. And their third event was like a, a little gaming event, they had wings and stuff, and I, after I saw the Brotherhood and stuff, everybody together, that really like convinced me. And then I went to two more events, and I was just more convinced every time that I went, so that's what made me join Delta Chi. Jared? Uh, so I went to Meet the Greeks. And just seeing them all interact with each other and treat me pretty special was was meaningful to me. So then I started going out to the recruitment events and someone stepped on my hand and I got to know Alex pretty well. And uh, that was really nice. And getting to know him made me want to join because I learned what they were all about. By someone, he means me. I stepped on his hand. You're mean. He deserved it. I believe it. And Panchito, where did you grow up? I grew up in the valley. I grew up uh, south, the very south of Texas. It's called McAllen. It was McAllen Mission. Um, so yeah, I grew up down there. Not a lot of people know about it. Unless you're from south Texas, you know the very tip of south Texas is the valley. So. And did you grow up with your mom and dad? I grew up with my mom and dad, yes, I did. Nice. And I see you like a little farm life. You're a little farm boy, right? Let me, let me hear about it. I'm a little farm boy. I guess you can put it that way if you want. I, I, I see myself more of a... <laughs> it's cute. More, I like it. More of a ranch boy more than a okay, farm boy. Okay, ranch boy. difference. Sorry. New term. Uh, so, it was uh, different growing up compared to a lot of other people because I had a lot more responsibilities to take care of because around the 6th or 7th grade is when I moved uh, I moved to the ranch with my dad. It was me, my dad, my mom, not my, and my sisters. No. By the time I moved, all my sisters had been married already and they had already gone like the whole starting the life process and I was just a kid so how I many moved sisters do you have? I have three sisters are you yeah. the youngest or oldest? I am the youngest Dang. compared to them yeah my, I have twin sisters and both of them like obviously are seven years apart from me and then my oldest sister is 11 years apart from me Ooh. so we're a little distant but still together so when I moved over there it was a little different because I felt like the stuff at the ranch was like a normal thing until I started going to school and Everybody else had, like, their own little responsibilities where they threw away the trash. Oh, I cleaned my room, and I was over here like, damn, bro, I had to go clean a horse's stall. <laughs> I had to go I had to go feed the goats, feed the horses. I had, at the time, I remember I was, like, 14, 15, and uh, I had the ranch to myself because my dad was hurt. He was a little handicapped from his uh, knees. He has really bad knees. And I had the ranch to myself, and I had to take care of it. At the time, we had, like, 32, 35 horses with mares that had babies and I had to take care of the babies and I had to take care of the goats and the cows that we had. It was a lot growing up, but honestly, it, what really drove me to go into my major. So I really do thank everything that brought me to this place. So Nice. And Jared, can I hear about your family? So uh, I, I grew up in a small town just north of Columbus, Ohio called okay. Lewis Center. I, uh... And then I moved in 2015 down to Houston, Texas for my dad's job. Uh, I had both my parents growing up my whole life. And I have an older brother who is three years above me, a younger sister who is two years younger than me, and a younger brother who is five years younger than me. Yeah, looking at your pics, I can see you're really close with your family. Yeah, you say so? I agree. We, we're, we're a very close family. Uh, I honestly think the move is what caused that. When we moved down here, not a single one of us knew anyone. And as a family of six, we spent a lot of time in a 800-square-foot hotel room while we were still looking for a house oh, in gosh. summer. Oh, gosh. So it was quite toasty in the room, but it really did bring us close. Well, that sounds fine, though. Yeah, it was a lot of fun having six people in a two-bedroom apartment for three months in the Houston heat. First time ever experiencing it. Nice. Oh, you weren't a big heat boy, huh? You're Mr. Ohio. Mr. If I walk outside, it's 70 degrees. Now you walk out here and it's a 
the devil's butt crack out here and yeah, it's, you, it's you out toasty. there. It's a little toasty. Out yeah, here. but I mean, I'd like to see you guys when it gets down to negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. I can cover up. <laughs> mm. <Yeah, no. laughs> okay, so I also noticed both of y'all love soccer. So I want to hear why you both like soccer because I'm not really good at soccer. <laughs> Um, I, I'd let Jared give out his experience first. Uh, his experience might be a little different than mine, given that he's from Big Boy, Ohio. So, um, Honestly, it's kind of like a, a hard sport to love once you get it to a high level. But the way I started out was, I mean, every little kid plays soccer. I swear, every little kid plays soccer at some point in their life. And it's just the weird ones that stick with it, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, I had my dad as my coach. <laughs> I had my dad as my coach for a while. Um, he was probably my coach until I was about 12. And then I just, uh, my parents decided to put me in a, an actual team that competes at a higher level so that I could develop. So they did that, and I've been playing at that level ever since. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, okay, at that level. Okay, going down, bro. Anyway, You're no. I uh so when I was younger I would go to the park very often with my friends but it wasn't much of like a I played soccer I just went to the park to go have fun and so like one day I actually did catch like a group of guys playing soccer and like I told my dad hey I want to play and real quick like, he put he put on my boots like my shooting boots and was like alright this is the cleats sorry cleats uh, and we started going at it, and I started really late. I believe I started, like, until I was 10 or 11 years old. And these kids had, like, five-plus years of experience ahead of me, so I, I would look, like, like very dumb compared to them. And that's how I started. And then I went to... It was mostly just a team from the street, if I'm being honest. All my teams were teams from the street. I played in the street the for... I don't know how the long. Yeah, I, I belonged to the streets, the literally. Still does. No, I do not. I have a beautiful girlfriend. Ladies, ladies. <laughs> so, she, she, so I, yeah, it was mostly in the streets until I got into a club team, and the club team is what took me to another level of soccer, but if I'm being honest, it wasn't until my freshman of, freshman year of high school that I believe I really touched, like, my peak level, where I started playing, like, a whole different ball game because I went to this other coach, and he played professional soccer and went through that whole, the whole thing. And uh, he would sit me down. He really humbled me. He uh, he put me on the bench. If I went on a one-on-one against the keeper or a two-on-one and it was an easier pass than a shot and I still scored, he'd sit me down if I scored. And he said, the pass was easier. So why did you shoot? And I said, because I thought I could score. And he's like, do you think I care if you thought you scored it? I told you, why didn't you pass it? And he put me to like this whole different level of mind that you know, I could do a lot more than what I think I can do. And I just played harder ever since, and I actually made it pretty far. I thought I was going to make it a little collegiate, but, you know, being a 5'2 Hispanic kid, I don't think it really helped. But, you know, no problems. Still out here, I had the great experience, and still play pickup games here and there. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I, I saw you at Greek Games. We'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jared, I also noticed you like more to Snackles, so I want to hear why. Um, it, it's... It's a hard thing to explain, but I started with dirt bikes when we first moved to Texas, and we had three of them. The biggest one was a 250, we had a 125, and then a tiny little 75 cc's, which is how big the engine is, how much gas it can hold. And uh, so they weren't very big, and I really started riding there, because no houses had been built around us, it was just an empty field, so we could ride all around our house back in uh, suburbs of Houston, which is very rare and then time caught up with us they uh they built all the houses and it became impractical to ride so we ended up selling them about a year and a half later and uh it really picked back up when i went back to ohio to see my family i rode my uncle's motorcycle just for fun and it it brought the bug as my dad calls it back and then when i got back to houston I just really, really wanted a motorcycle. So my dad, I kind of made a deal with him. I was like, hey, you don't have to buy me a car. Let me just get a motorcycle. So then I eventually, after an entire summer of trying, convinced him to get a motorcycle, which then I adopted. So you have a motorcycle? I don't anymore because uh, I decided to get stupid with it. Uh, I went pretty fast, and I ended up totaling it. Man, I want to 
wanted to ride with you. Don't worry, another one's coming. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> I'll be patient. Okay, and Panchito, you know, I want to hear a little bit about, you know, your little girlfriend. Just a little bit. <laughs> My girlfriend? I mean, she's from... Uh, I want to know how y'all met. Ah, uh-huh, that's a funny story. Um, well, how we originally met was, like, back she, in... She's in AS... She's in ASA. Okay. She's in Alpha Sigma Alpha here in... She's the president of the sorority. Cute. Yeah, Cute. but, um... We met, like, two years ago, if I'm being honest. Uh, back when I was a freshman here in uh, college in Kingsville. And I never, like... I never really talked to her much then. Like, we had to- two totally different friend groups. And, honestly, my freshman and sophomore year, I wasn't, like the perfect um let's say student so nah, went, i went through it, it you know happens. but if i'm being honest this summer is when we really got close um it was mostly because she hung out with alex our abt president and gave my best friend also part of her fraternity i live with both of them and she started coming over because she'd go with them but you know i was also there okay. and so we you know i, I got to meet her a lot more, got to hang out with her a lot more, and then I really, like, fell in love with her because she's just, like, a caring person, and no one has actually cared about what I say and what I talk about, and she really made it, made sure and made it, like, important. Anything I said, she listened to me, and, like, she helped me through a lot and made me who I am today, and I'm still growing to this point, so meeting her in the summer is probably, like, one of the best things I'd ever experienced in my life, so, yeah, that's how we met. It was during the summer over little movies and other nights that we had that's cute yeah that's real real cute absolutely adorable (laughs) okay but i want to hear about greek games what do you guys think about greek games man we did win because we did win we won thankfully but if i'm being honest it's just a panchito games because golly man i'm gonna be honest guys i carried i put the team on my back i put i put delta comma back and i held it so high because i wanted to win just a little bit just just a little bit that week took it out of me, if I'm being honest. By when I when it came Friday and we had nothing to do, I swear I just wanted to sleep, because on Monday we had volleyball, beach volleyball. That is gruesome. We played two games only, but it was six sets of 25 in the heat. It was not pretty. I hated it. I love volleyball. It's so much fun, but just trying your best and like to win and everything, and the other team is also trying, but you're not as good as them, but yet you still try, you know. And then on Tuesday soccer, I felt like <laughs> it was a one against eight, and that was very difficult to do. Still put the team on my back, you know. Got to hold, hold the side. Okay. You know, you know uh, I did. You were there. You were watching. Okay. You were like, "Oh my god, I didn't I'll know you could play like that." Right now. Oh really? No, but <laughs> it was a uh, it was a good experience though. I felt like this Greek game was a lot different than the other. Was it three two that we've played? This one was a little different. Uh, I have never seen so many Greeks out there in Greek games. Usually, it's only the people that go and play. They go, and that's it. And I don't know what happened this year that everybody decided to show up and watch. Everybody. There's a lot of people, a lot more people than I've ever seen. It's yeah, and it was, it was really, really nice to see. Really nice. So, I really enjoyed Greek games, and we won, so we got free shirts out of it and some clout, you know? How do you feel about Greek games, Jared? Because I know we couldn't participate. Oh, yeah. I was, uh, I was pretty upset. We did not get to partake, and uh, it's only a 2v8 next semester, so we should have it under control. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys have your moment. We'll let you guys have your moment. <laughs> you could have been a good help this year, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got yeah. next semester. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was great, though. Yeah, it was cool seeing y'all play. Yeah, it was. Uh, I I enjoyed also, like, everybody that has never played soccer in their life before just pull up and be ready to play. And them saying after, like, that was actually really fun. It's a pretty good experience to have because I'd never think somebody would say soccer was fun because to me, at the like Jared said, at the level we play at or we played at, it wasn't fun. It was just straight competitive, and that was horrendous. But, yeah, then this week was hard. <laughs> <laughs> but we're out of it. We're good now. Yeah, Took speak, the dub. Speaking of hard things, are any of you guys' classes, like, really hard right now? Man, you know, I'm gonna let Jared, the mechanical engineer, talk about this. I'll go yeah, after him. Yeah, Jared. So, uh, yeah, I'd say I underestimated the workload for mechanics. And, yeah, now we're bouncing back from that. Other than that, I'd say most of my classes are pretty under control. That's good. I'd like to think. I mean, I also thought the same thing. I was like, yeah, this physics thing I got in the bag. The oh, first yeah. test, I got a 6 out of 20. Oh, yeah. And I was like, dang, bro. <laughs> But that's just me in physics, you know. I'm not that good of math 
but everything else has been pretty under control. I'm taking a, I'm doing a research class. I have breeding and genetics for animals. I have um, beef management, call it the big beef class. It's literally a blow-off class, but honestly, it's still a little more difficult than I thought it would be. And a lot more people are struggling than me, but you know, still a little hard. Taking 17 hours is not that easy. And I know next, I have like a few classes lined up for the summer and next fall, so. Now I'm curious, what is a beef class? Dude, it's not what I expected it to be. <laughs> I don't know so what I expected the, to be. The, the class is called beef management, right? And I walk in there the first day, and I, and I took sheep and goat management, by the way, last semester. Sheep and goat management for me was breezy because I have had goats and sheep my whole life, and I knew everything there was to be in that class. Like, I knew it. I knew it. But I don't know much about cattle. I'm not a cattle guy, you know? So I step in there not knowing what's going to happen, and it was the, the basic stuff like breeds and uh, cuts of steak and stuff like that so I knew I knew that but now we're more into like the enterprise and companies and uh, statistics and stuff and I'm like yo what's going on I don't know anything about cattle bro and uh, I felt like I did know about cattle and this, this guy just like slapped me around I was like nah you don't, you don't know anything and it's not what I thought it was but honestly it's not that hard it's just more work that I don't need but we have to take I really don't want to work with cattle, even though I do want to do large animal. Cattle's not my, my thing, but I also do them. It's a good class. I just sit in there and listen and get good grades, you know, just like any good student should do. Yes. <laughs> How many cuts of beef are there? Dude, you'd be surprised. There's like, uh, I mean, the, they, they, cut the, they cut the whole animal, right? The whole cow. And you have your, your, front, your front part. You have like, uh, what's it called? Is it? There's the ribs, the loin, the shank, the flank, the round. I like, I like shank. Yeah, and so like you know, you know all those like different cuts, and honestly, like I feel like the the most expensive cut is obviously like a prime ribeye. You know, everybody wants a prime ribeye. Yeah, everybody wants a prime ribeye. I yeah. definitely knew that. Well, yeah, but there's other like cuts of steak that people don't know about. Do you know about the flat iron steak? Yeah, I've actually heard of that. Well, that's a Texas thing, actually. Oh. You know, if you get very little cuts of beef for a flat iron like it's just like a very minimal place yeah. that you can get it from and I, I've learned small things like small things like that and I don't know there's just too many cuts for me to even call them all out I knew them for a second when I had to take it for that test but obviously <laughs> <laughs> now that it's like two three weeks later that thing is out of my head yep. even though it's not supposed to be like that do not do active recall it's not a good thing but it's okay you know I had to do it for that test got a 99 on it by the way so just would you say learning about beef makes you want to eat beef more or less likely dude Honestly, it made me hungry, bro. <laughs> like, nice. he put up the steaks, and I'd be like, God, I'm about to go to the steakhouse. Good- actually. <laughs> I think there was a good week where I was just eating steak for the long, it was so good, bro. Honestly, I forgot how good steaks were. And then I tried different, like, obviously, the way you cook it. Because no matter how you cook it, it's still going to be good. Like, you know that even if you do it rare, it's not going to kill you. Like, the bacteria in there are dead. You don't have to worry about it. Doesn't, doesn't matter how you do it. It tastes good. Yeah, no, I don't like rare. Hell no. I'm a medium guy. Yeah. That's it. I can't do, like, okay. I can't do anything lower than that. I'm a medium guy. Okay. People that eat well done, you, I swear, you just, like... You're you, like you, chewing you, on rubber. You're chewing tobacco or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's not good. You're chewing backwards, like... <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what you're chewing on. But no, it's, uh... Yeah, that, that class did make me a little hungry and wanting steak a little more, honestly. But, yeah, I'm mean, over that. We're not talking about steaks anymore, so it doesn't make me as hungry. Did you guys do any cool, like, experiments for your class? Or, like, any of your classes, like, done a cool project? Ooh. I feel like you might have done something, Jared, but I don't know. I mean, I haven't done too many projects that are, like, at all interesting in any way. I've done a fair share of them, but most of them have just been reports, PowerPoints, presentations, and stuff like that. Um, I'd say the coolest one I had to do was I designed a rainwater collection system and reuse for a city building down in Brownsville. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's not as interesting as it sounds. We just 3D modeled the building and then used common knowledge, like where to put the gutters, where to store the water, and how to reuse it, and what pump we would need to do that. Okay, okay, I see you. Yeah, it wasn't super interesting, but I mean, I'd say that was one of the more interesting things I've done in engineering generic classes so far. 
That sounds pretty cool. Okay. I can chime in on this a little. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I got to do was uh, there's a class called 2310. Well, that's the class number, but it's called uh, Livestock Management, right? And in this class, your project for the whole class is raising an animal and helping it give birth and then taking care of the babies. So I got a, I got a pig. I had to take care of a pig. She was pretty big. She was a, she was a big girl. She was huge. Do they have a place for you to like put them? Or yes, you just they, they get, they, there's this thing called farrowing crates. That's where they have their babies. And it's like a crate where they literally cannot move. Like they're just standing in one area and that's where they sleep. So you have to clean it and everything and that's where they eat and they're just standing there waiting for them to give birth. Because pigs are horrible when they give birth. They uh, kill so many piglets because they like sit on them and stuff. Like they don't know they're, they're horrible mo- mothers. If I'm being honest, bro, <laughs> that's why they have so many. Like nature has given them so many opportunities because damn, they, te- they keep taking the L's with the kids. <laughs> but um, it was interesting because uh, we start off with the pig. I'm not. I I raised a pig back when I was like a freshman in high school, but I'm not. I don't really like pigs that much. You know, they're they're loud. They're, they're I think just, pigs are cute. They're like not my thing. They're not teacup. But they're, these pigs are okay, huge. Like they're like hogs. Pigs, like cute little teacup yeah, pigs. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, I'll give it to you. It's, it's a cute little instant moment. But, yeah, um, it looks cute. But so we had to take care of this thing until it gave birth, right? So mine gave birth really late compared to everybody else's. She had, I don't know how many bacterial infections that she had Ew. because it was the time that we had to freeze. Oh. You remember the freeze? Well, let me talk about that, actually. Dude, that freeze is terrible. That freeze was terrible, but the freeze happens, right? And tell me why the farm manager of uh, Kingsville, shout out to the farm manager, by the way, he uh, turns off the pipes of water because he thought it was going to be the best thing to do for a freeze, you know, because that's exactly what you do. You don't run the water. Hell no. That's dumb. You turn off the pipes. All the pipes cracked. We had no water for two weeks when we had all these animals to take care of. So what did we do? They brought in like the uh, freaking uh, trash cans full of water like the plastic ones the blue ones the blue bins the 55 full of gallons. water yeah and we had to like get like gallons out oh when it was cold gosh. and you put your hands in there and everything oh it was the worst thing and then the, those things would freeze as well sometimes and it was the worst like experience ever but when she gave birth I thought it was pretty cool the little piglets running around they're like Ee! <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to like uh, do little notches on their ear to identify each one which is actually was pretty cool and then you got to inject it with like an iron shot to keep it from since it's born in a farrowing crate this is like another like detail since it's born in a far- uh, pigs get they're anemic they're born anemic right so when they're when they're born they get all the iron and stuff all their iron deficiency everything that goes away because of the, of the floor there's iron on the floor obviously you get iron from the floor, they pick it up, blah, blah, blah. They get all this stuff. Well, they're not born on the floor. They're born on a farrow and crate. It's all plastic. They don't get that stuff. So you have to inject them with an iron shot, like one cc of iron or something like that. Interesting. So that was like a pretty cool thing, and that's a cool project that we had to do for that class. I Aww. got a shot in my butt before. <laughs> it sucked. Yeah, no. We put it on their neck. Tetanus? No, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was like, because I was sick, and I had to travel to go see my dad, so... They were like, yeah, the, the butt shot's going to be the best way for him to feel better. Ooh. So they had to hold me down, and I had to take that like a man. Mm, yeah, I can just imagine how that felt. I mean, that's like a Mexico thing, though. You get sick, go down to Mexico, get a butt shot, you come back, and you're, you're cured. <laughs> I don't know what they give you, but they give you something. People will be coming back with those those butt lifts. That's <laughs> <laughs> a little lopsided, baby. <laughs> Yeah, nice. yeah, the famous Mexican butt lifts. Yeah, the famous <laughs> they come back and it pops and it's just like, yo, <laughs> what <Yeah>. happened? <laughs> no. <laughs> or it's either they pop or they're ceramic. Yeah, it's, it's some weird. They, you know, there's some weird experiences that can happen in Mexico. <laughs> I, I can attest to that. There's just a lot of weird stuff. You've been to Mexico a lot? Uh, not really, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't go down there often. My sisters do. I never grew up there. I was born there. But I never grew up there. I was born and brought over here. Like, as soon as I was born, like, a year later, I was brought over here. So I don't remember anything. I was born in Idaho and just, like, brought over here. Like, <laughs> no, was, like not even a year old. You were, like, a big potato man? Yeah. Yeah. You like potatoes? I mean, I don't like sweet potatoes. Even though it's homeless sweet potatoes, I hate sweet yeah. potatoes. Potatoes are pretty cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I mean, like, if you think about it, there's a lot of things you can do with potatoes. Like You can make a clock. Yeah. You can, I guess. They have, like, little things that, Mister Okay, like... Mr. F- Mr. Fifth Grader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't clock. raising baby pigs. That's both, better than freaking making the potato clock. Y'all grew up differently, and y'all love each other. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't raising baby pigs. I wasn't raising baby pigs when I was younger. Was I? No, I didn't. I didn't raise pigs. 
I'm not a big pig guy. Don't you? I'm more of a horse guy. So yeah. you you live um a little bit off campus, right? With yeah, with Alex and Gabe. Yes. Yes, I do. And how is that? How's that experience? What exactly you're asking? Because um, yeah. I can I can I can give you I, I think I know where you're going at and if you want to go dive deep into this topic you can. Oh, yeah, of okay. Course. So <laughs> that's funny. Okay. So for everybody's information, Alex and Gabe are gay. And they are my two best friends and they live we I live with them. It, I come from the valley where everybody's very small minded. Where everybody thinks that being gay is wrong, being trans is wrong being asexual, being bisexual, whatever you call it, whatever it is, whatever you want to be, is wrong. Everything is wrong, but straight, which is not okay, right? And I thought so too at one point, if I'm being honest. Don't cancel me, please. But no, I can say, I can truthfully say that I thought so as well, Mm -hmm. that it wasn't right, mostly because I was raised around that, and that's not okay. So when I came over here, I met Gabe through a pre-vet meeting, like an animal science, like a pre-vet club, blah, 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 and I met him there. And then from there, we just hung out, like, every day. We went to Starbucks every day, and we talked every day. We had the same major, had the same classes. Like, we just, like, we connected real quick. Became a really close friend of mine. And then, fast forward a year later, we're living together. We're living in a small apartment called Ranch View Apartments, like, a little off campus as well. And then uh, Alex comes along. Well, I get Gabe to join the Delta Cat fraternity. He then meets Alex. Alex being our ABT president. They had their whole story time come through and I knew Alex was gay and just living with Alex was like a little different, you know, Um, I had, I can say I wasn't like used to living with somebody that was gay, but I mean, mean, it was a life changing experience. Like he taught me so many things that I would have never been taught ever. And he showed me how it is to be like compassionate and like nice to people, even though when you, you don't want to be. Because I still need to work on that, like True. little anger issues. It's, it comes with being short. I think it's yeah. just a little side effect. It's a side effect. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was a it was a life changing experience. Uh, and then when they got together, when they became official, they they became a couple. I was really happy for Gabe because like everybody would always cu- question him, and even I questioned him at a point. But everybody would always question him, and he hated the questions. Like he hated it, and we talk about it, and then like he he didn't want to hear about that, and. Luckily, Alex made him, like, notice what he actually is, and he opened up to everybody, and then during the commencement speech, I don't know if y'all heard it or not, he gave our, uh, the, the last graduation, he gave the commencement speech, which I'm really proud of him for doing, and he said it out loud, that, like, he, he was very proud to what everything that happened, he shouted me out in the commencement speech, pretty cool, and it was just, I don't know, it's life-changing, man, like, everybody, it's, love is love, you know, I... I see it like that. Love is love. I love everybody. As long as you're nice to me. If you're mean to me, I'm like, dude, back up. Back up. I don't care who you are. Just back up. But love is love, man. Like, let it be. Who is bothering you for loving another person? Like, they're not bothering you. True. No one bothers me. True. Like, come on. I don't mind. I freaking love Alex and Gabe. And then my, <laughs> my sisters question me sometimes, too. They're like, are you sure you're not gay? And I'm like, why? And I'm like, because you're surrounded by gay friends. I'm like, and what is that to you? It makes it like 20 times more fun. What are you talking about? <laughs> people know how to have fun a little bit. Dude, exactly. I've never had so much fun, dude. Like, it was, like, the most freaking perfect experience. Like, you know RJ, right? Yes. Well, RJ is also part of the fraternity. He's also gay. And then we have Chris. And we have Chris that's also gay. And then Alex and Gabe. And it was me, Alex, Gabe, Chris, and RJ. And they'd always say, okay, the gays are going, and Panchito. <laughs> so I was a little outed but it was so much fun like it was I, I love the guys I love them and it's been a life changing experience ever since I met them and I really appreciate everything they've taught me so far and I know they're gonna only teach me more things as we go and I can't wait to see their wedding soon <laughs> yeah, it'll be nice it'll be nice and Jared where do you live on campus? I live in uh, Mesquite Village it's a dorm on campus and on the fourth floor and you live with some of our brothers, right? Our class? Or no? No. So, uh, I had a couple people oh, in wait. my dorm rush. They all got dropped for various reasons. And uh, and that, that's about that. Why did they get dropped? Uh, they, they couldn't maintain grades their freshman year. Uh, most freshmen have a problem with that. Once they get out into the free world, they kind of just go mental. And uh, so, they, they were no exception from that rule. Okay. 
I like that answer. By uh, mental, like, what do you mean? They just kind of like, like they're like, okay, no rules. I'm gonna do whatever I want. They go out drinking. They smoke. They do all this sort of stuff, and uh, they they just like to have a good time. So having a good time with no rules. Yeah, yeah pretty much, and that's how they see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna dive deep into that though. Okay. It comes. I believe that came from COVID. Like, um, y'all are COVID babies. Y'all are first class to come out of COVID that had COVID during high school. Yes. I like those it. those freshmen that came in this semester that actually that came onto campus is the first class that came from COVID. So it was interesting to see how y'all were gonna react. You know, I had my own freshman semester and everything, but. You guys, your guys' approach to college was a little more different than mine. Like, I saw crazy things. Y'all are absolutely crazy. And I say y'all because David is a part of that class. But David, David's learned already. He, he doesn't need to be taught anything. He's, yeah, he's, I know crazy. Yeah, he know, he's seen it. But I believe it comes with that. Like, uh, I talked to my professors and I talked to um, my research professor. And I, we talked basically every day. And it's the ability of, like, not being able to study that's gone that ability for these freshmen that came in is gone and I feel like that's what caused that decline the decline of like grades and everything so yeah and I saw I saw it happen and yeah um, I don't know it was just a little different the study habits really went away and I can't really change it alright all right, are you, you you gonna I mean if you can you can go yeah no one's stopping you. You need a P-Jared. Yes, I you need do. need a P-Jared. <laughs> no, okay, I'll keep going with this, we, though. We can talk once you go. Okay. So, yeah, I, I believe the study habits are a little gone, but honestly, it also comes with, like, a lot of mental health stuff. You know, you don't know what anybody's going through. You don't know people's experiences. You don't know, like, how they were brought up. Like, me and Jared are completely different. What I, I didn't even know he was from, Idaho, from Ohio. I didn't even know you were born in Idaho. So, like, stuff that like that that I don't know, I can't blame them for being freshmen and not knowing what to do the first semester it's okay yeah that's true as long as you learn from it you know yeah, there's nothing wrong with that from it, then it's a problem. exactly if you don't learn from it then that's that's on you but i I'll, i didn't know what to expect i even told these guys like spring semester i was afraid for what we we're gonna see on, in fall i had no idea what we were ready like what we were expecting and what we got was not what i was expecting at all but y'all are crazy but Thankfully, the people that came into the Elliptic Guy fraternity are, are learning a little bit more. And I'm sure, like, throughout campus, everybody else is learning as well. And, obviously, those who don't are the ones that are going to leave. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, that's what I... Okay, well, I want to ask you a question, Panchito. Because when I first came here, I think you were, like, the first person to come up to me and talk to me. Or, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, it was me and Wapo. Yeah. What made you want to come up to me? You seem really cool. The fact that you're walking out there in heels, in a skirt, and freaking strutting your stuff, I was like, that's the guy I want. They're like lifted boots, not heels. Well, just still, that's still hard though. I was like, that's the guy, well, I, that's the confidence we need. Because eh, no one else will do that I'll but show, you. I can show some people some confidence. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, we gotta go talk to him. And I grabbed up, I'm like, let's go talk to this guy right now. <laughs> and that's like the, and then we went up to you and you were so down for it. And I was like, hell yeah, like I... He seems like the type of person that we want. Like you, and you are. You, you. We were correct in our. We were correct. You know, we saw you, and I told him the confidence is everything. I appreciate I, it. Yeah, and you still rock your stuff like every freaking day. Of course, we have to. Oh yeah, it was. It was very. What? How was your pee break, Jared? It was honestly pretty good. Well deserved, I think. Well, relieving. Well, I had to pee for a while, and uh, I was holding it. And then I couldn't, so I had to go. <laughs> yes, very nice. But yeah, that's what that's what made me and Wapo kind of come up to you. I'm glad we did. Now you're here. Look at you. Yeah, now then you guys got me. Yeah, there you go. So a great you, asset. <laughs> do you know who came up to Jared or who talked to Jared? Uh, he came up to us actually. Oh, Jared. Yeah. So I was at the other uh, meet the Greeks, and I was just going. Uh, well, okay, they were actually the first ones we went and saw because they were the first ones on the left. And all the Greek organizations had their little displays set up, all their guys around it coming to talk to you and uh, to, to try and like show you what they're all about. And that was actually our first stop and the one I was most interested in because my dad was a Delta guy. And what are the odds that this small university 
out in West Texas has the same fraternity that my dad went to, which was pretty cool. So I was automatically interested in Delta Chi specifically. And it was ultimately when this man kind of came up and was just talking to all of us. Well, me and my roommates at the time, we had all gone together. And uh, it was when Panchito came up and started talking to us. And then Wapo from behind him uh, made like a little height. Like he made height with his hand and just put like way down to the floor, <laughs> making fun of Panchito's height while he was just talking to us. And it was uh, that that really got me interested in these, these guys specifically. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, it's still fun, even though, like, yeah. there's business aspects to that. We For us, that was a little business thing. It wasn't, like, a fun thing, but we try to make it as fun as we can with still trying to keep that professionalism with you. Because, like, we still mess around, but, you know, you got to separate that with professionalism, and luckily, we're able to do that so well, and I think that's what really attracted you guys, especially you and your other three roommates that you had at the time. Yeah, I like people who know how to have fun, but also get their work done. Yeah, and luckily, that's something that we have, like... We all worked really hard to make this fraternity especially like specifically like that. Yes, we can have fun, but that's not the only thing we do. Like you gotta know where your where your limits are to having fun. You gotta keep it classy. Exactly. Gotta keep it classy. Keep it classy. I love that. Gotta keep it classy. Mm-hmm. Classy. Classy Delta Chi. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a different experience though, and I and I really want to hear from like AMs, you know, like y'all. Uh, should be hear? should be initiates. What you want to hear? I want to hear like what was y'all's first impressions? <laughs> Not like I yeah, yeah my first impressions for y'all, but y'all's first impressions for us. Like the first few events, how was that week? How was the process of your minds? Like oh, I really want to do this. I don't want to do this. Like how was that? Um, I I I kind of went in not really wanting to join one, and only went to just for some reason just to see what you guys were all about, everyone, and um. It, it was really uh, so my first impression I didn't really see the formal side I, I mostly just saw the fun side I didn't see what was all happening behind the scenes <laughs> so I kind of just walked up and there was just a bunch of guys goofing around teasing each other and then doing athletic things on the side like going to play football which sounded like right up my alley a bunch of guys that goof around have fun and then <laughs> get to do stuff together is exactly what I was interested in so I started coming out to the events and then I got a little taste of the more formal, the back end, when Alex was taking care of my newly swollen hand. And uh, Alex and I just got to talk about my background, what his background, and the whole fraternity as a whole. And that was really, really insightful. And ultimately what pushed me over the, uh, I, I do want to join. That's cool. What about you, David? Mm-hmm. Well, my first time meeting most of y'all was at the. It was it was in the auditorium. Mm-hmm. What is that place called? The P- Peacock Auditorium. The Peacock Art. The Best B One Hundred. And what was that called? <laughs> it was like an. Inf- what was that like an informational or? That was supposed to be our most boring event, and it turned out to be one of the best ones. Okay. Well, Good. yeah, I went to that one, and you know, I was just looking at all y'all, judging all of y'all in my head. Mm-hmm. I was like, hmm, do these guys really deserve me? <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I listened to y'all, I listened to all of y'all, and I was like, yeah, I can hang around these guys. So I joined. That's good. That's good. You had your boundaries up. Of course. The first I two or to. three weeks, you I had, had your to. walls up, and I was like, those walls are going to come down sooner or later. Bitch. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Sorry, sorry. But those walls did come down. And, I mean, I don't blame you for having your walls up, you know, again, freshman don't really know us and that's okay well i had my walls up for different reasons but yeah i know i I've, I've seen those walls been put up by other people as well everyone's got walls yeah you i've just seen gotta them. dig for some of them you gotta dig a little hard for mine huh <laughs> you gotta dig a little hard for mine we, well, we gotta get through the outer one it. and you then we get it. to the second outer one <laughs> we just gotta keep breaking them down and we got there we did and we look did at him now <laughs> Nah, it was. Now nah, he's grilling us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's been grilling us since day one. It wasn't. True, true. <laughs> it wasn't anything different. We actually then. get a chance to respond this way. It's not in his head. <laughs> yeah, and then I mean, and then the thing that really got me interested is like, oh, I play video games, and I was like, dang, you play video games too? Yeah. And I, then, I like to do a little of everything. Yeah, I mean, video games are right up my alley as well. The same as Jared. I know he can. Me and him play from time to time. Play a little bit of Rocket League. Oh yeah. Have you guys played any like old consoles? 
Mm, yeah, I mean, I still play on my Xbox One. Yeah. <laughs> like the old, the old dinosaur one, the first yeah, one that came out. I still have my GameCube. No Dude. way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your GameCube. Oh That's my god. That's crazy. Bro. Okay. I had the freaking uh, Nintendo 64. Did y'all play Nintendo 64? I had 64? Nintendo 64. The whole... The first console. <laughs> oh, yeah, you had to blow yeah, in the cartridge. <laughs> the, <laughs> the cartridge and hope to God your game was working. <laughs> yeah. I had so many games in that thing. It was absolutely insane. I played Mario Kart with my sisters. Oh, I played yeah. Mario 64, Mario Tennis, Mario Soccer, WWE. When, oh, it was actually WWF at the time. I played so many freaking games on that thing until like I broke it. Until it didn't work anymore. Dang. But I swear, I, I wore that thing out. I used every last cent of the Nintendo 64. It was so much fun. That era was just absolutely amazing. Those games are pretty fun. Like the Mario Party games like on the GameCube. Yeah. I, the GameCube, I never really had it. Like, so I, I don't really have much of an experience for it, but like I'd like to hear... How was the GameCube? There were so many fun things to do on a GameCube. I didn't really grow up with the GameCube, but I remember playing it because my brothers, my brothers like collecting like old systems like that. So like my brothers have like they have like the 64, they have like a PS2, PS1, they have the old Xbox, and they have like so many games and like controllers for them. And like I would just play them when I got like to a certain age. It was actually really fun, like playing like old Pokemon games or like old like games like Mario Tennis and. Mario Party 3, 2, 4, like, there are so many games. Metroid Prime. You just opened up, like, a core memory in me. Freaking Pokemon Stadium. The Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Coliseum. Oh, my lord, dude. <laughs> that game. Did you ever play that Magikarp one where you hit, like, the little dice on top when you, like, freaking spam the button into your always, magic? I was always good at spamming Where your, ma- your Magikarp was, like, <laughs> like, freaking flopping up and down, hitting the thing. I remember Pokemon Stadium so much. It was so much fun. The, the story mode was a little hard, though, if I'm being honest. Yeah, you gotta find stuff on your own sometimes. But, I don't know, those those days, those were the days, you know, but... If you wanna talk about video game days, I can talk about Black Ops 2, bro. Oh, oh my lord. Oh, the Xbox 360. I had the PS3. Oh. You know, same experience, though, oh, we yeah. still had the fun. Oh, yeah. We just didn't have the scammers that'd be like, Attention all Xbox uh, users. <laughs> My dad works for Microsoft. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get your account banned. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. But the Black, Black Ops 2, um, MW3, those, that era was absolutely unbe- I mean, at the time, I was a squeaker. <laughs> and they'd say so. Still are. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so then <laughs> so then they'd have a... So there's... <laughs> I would grow now. I guess I can talk about it. <laughs> There is this feature on the PS3 that lets you lower like deep in your voice. <laughs> so you know, I was using that to make sure they wouldn't call me a squeaker. <laughs> and another thing about being grown, um, I screen watched. I I screen watched the whole time whenever I played against someone. I don't care who you were. I watched your screen. I knew exactly where you were. I'm sorry, but I'm saying it out loud. We're grown. I did that. I still do. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I mean, one v ones are not the same as they used to, but no. I mean, gun game with the roommates. Oh yeah, I have to win. Yeah, so you just screen watch. Oh you know? yeah. Some we some people I've caught on. Oh, you're screen peeking. You're screen looking. Nah, it's called screen watching. I don't know why people call it differently, but anyway, <laughs> that era was absolutely unbeaten. They can compete. I could say that's the best, but a competition to that was quarantine modern warfare. I don't think I don't think Jared has experience. I don't know if you do, David. Did you play like Modern Warfare during quarantine? Mm-mm. Dude, oh my god! I can tell you about Del- my own experience with Delta Kai in during that time. Okay, well let's talk about something else for a second. <laughs> and um, I want to know: Do you guys like any places around Kings or like to eat any around anywhere around over here? Spice Station. I was going to say the same thing. Spice Station. That place is phenomenal. Shout out to Mr. Spice, bro. Oh, my so God. So good. Okay. It is station. so good. The Indian cuisine just... Do you get the uh, the chicken? Which one? I get the orange <laughs> and the red chicken. <laughs> There's only chicken there. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I got the I got the orange and then the, the red. Uh, the butter the chicken s- and the chicken 65. Not the butter, because that's like green. I don't mm-hmm. know. Oh, wait, that is butter the butter chicken? chicken? Butter chicken is the one that's like orange. Orange and red. Those are the, the two red that one I get. is chicken yeah. sixty five. Those are so good. Yeah, hell yeah. You that's get freaking. spicy or not spicy? Huh? The spicy rice. You so all the spicy. way, bro. Yeah, Come on. Absolutely. So good. 
I, I freaking love spice. Have you had Spice Station, David? Yes, I've had it like twice. It's it's pretty good. I like it. And they're loaded fries. Have you tried their loaded fries? I have not, dude. If you ever have the chance <laughs> to try the loaded fries, I suggest y'all go try the loaded. You're fries. You're about to make me walk over there. Or it's closed. Over there it's right Sunday. They close oh, on Sunday. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, but if you really, really want to try something there, the loaded fries with butter chicken, absolutely amazing. Okay, I will definitely get that next time. So, would you guys say there's any fun things to do in Kingsville? No. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to like do fun, in Kingsville. Like, fun definition. I mean, it could be, like, a place. It could be maybe something <laughs> you do that maybe other people might think that's fun. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to be honest. There's really nothing to do here. <laughs> <laughs> there really like, as, as much as I hate to say it, there's really not much to do. If you want to have fun, you got to go to Corpus. And Corpus is only a 30-minute drive, so it makes it worth it, so... But in reality, I don't think there's really much fun to do here in Kingsville. I guess if you really like going out, there's two clubs here in Kingsville, but... A I, solid two. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's too much fun. But you know what? Everybody has their own taste. Yeah, that's true. Walking around Walmart's not bad. When you used to be able to, now they close it early for no reason. Yeah, I know. That sucks. They close at 10 now, right? It's something like that, yeah. Before, you used to go like at 2, 3 in the morning to Walmart. <laughs> don't yeah. do that no more. Not anymore. Times have changed. They have. <laughs> so, y'all guys say you go to Corpus to have fun. I want to know what you guys do in Corpus, because I've been to Corpus a pretty good amount of times. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I've gone to different places in Corpus. I went to, like... I mean, the beach. The, the beach the is beach, obviously yeah. where you go, right? But I went to this place where they had, like, go-karts. They had... Was it, like, fun trackers? Or that one, that one. Yeah, there you go. That's why when they had, like, an arcade and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That place was fun. That place was fun. I went, like... Yeah, I went with Gabe, actually, and it was really, really fun. And what else did we... I like... Uh, there's a couple of brothers who live up there, so going to the beach with them, cooking it up over there at the beach, making some chicken, it's really, really fun when you go out there. And uh, I go to the movies with my girl over there, too, and uh, I think it's pretty much all I've done in Corpus. I can't say I really experienced everything. I haven't gone to the aquarium yet. We should go. I really do want to go. We should go. I've been there. Pretty I really nice. like fish. like big fish. Big fish. Yeah, like sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, what did you do in Corpus? So I've actually only been twice. Once was like a couple years after we had moved, so around 2018. I went with my mom, my little brother, and my little sister. And we had just gone down there because my mom really wanted to go to the beach. So we were driving down, and on the way down, our tire exploded. Like genuinely because of the, the Texas heat. It just exploded. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, so then I had to very quickly learn how to change a tire, which I did in 30 minutes or less, which I was really impressed with myself. And uh, I changed it, and we kept going, but because it was a spare, we couldn't drive around on it for more than, what is it, like 5,000 miles or something like that? And so we had to cut the trip a little early, and we ended up only being down there for a day or two, and then we had to drive back up and get a new tire. Hmm. And then the second time was actually just a couple days ago with you. Wait, what did you do the first time? Oh, we just went to the beach. Sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. it, it wasn't anything interesting. Okay. And then uh, the second time was with you a couple days ago where we just went down there to go to the beach and play spike ball, except I forgot the spike ball ball. And what did we do after? So then we, <laughs> we were going to go to the movies and they wouldn't let us in. Wait, what did we do before the movies? Um, before okay, we went in the park. We like goofed around on the playground. Yes, we went to the park. We yeah, played yeah. Around the we park. were playing around on the playground. Uh, Shelby and I tried to do muscle ups, and then we tried to climb through a hole, which didn't go very well. And then uh, after that, we tried to go to the movies. Yes, and, and then, they were closed. Yeah, they would not let us in, even though it was before the last movie time. It was like ten forty, and the last movie started at ten fifty which they would not let us in, which was really strange. They just don't like you. Yeah, uh, yeah I guess haters. not. They they're are. Haters. They're haters. Yep, yeah, wouldn't doubt it. It's Corpus. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, Corpus is okay. I can't say it's the most fun place, but it's a lot more fun than Kingsville. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they actually have movie theaters. Hey, yo, we used to have a movie theater we down here. We used to, and now it's closed. So, right actually, by I think Wapo and I got to go one time, and we went to go watch what's in Zombieland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, was like, it was like, dude, the weirdest thing ever. The we seats, go into... The seats were all, like, 
the seats were like if you're in a classroom, like like the Peacock Auditorium, like that. Ew, but like not even it's not even that like elevated. It's like literally it's straight. Gross. It's like it was the worst experience. This popcorn was stale, bro. Oh. I was like, damn, what am I doing right now? Why are we here? But the movie was still cool to watch. But it was interesting. And then after that year, I guess like COVID hit and obviously it died. I mean, it was like one of those old uh, movie theaters that they had that they used to have in, inside like little plazas and malls like that That that's what the, the theater was not like it's own separate place like they have nowadays kind of like have you ever seen Stranger Things? yeah well, where they have like the theater inside the yeah. mall what's like that? that's where it used to be like have you gone to the Goodwill here in Kingsville? no I have it's right behind that there's like a little thing that you go it's like wild horses and like that and it's like it's like a that place puzzle. was the movie theater yeah you walk in there and it's a deeper in and it's to the right and that was the movie theater mm. interesting right interesting yeah <laughs> you would have never I would I didn't know that there was a movie theater it was a little sketch if I'm being honest a little, a little sketchy you know a little freshman just walking in there but honestly it was it was, it was, it was okay like for Kingsville I guess <laughs> yeah they tried they tried I'm sure it was popping at one point it probably was. There's a lot of, like, little stories around Kingsville that I feel like are just not, like, open. Or, I don't know. They're all by H-E-B, that mm-hmm. little historic center. Yeah. We had this idea. Uh, Alex Alex and I came up with this idea, like, last year. We're, we're kind of down to, like, make a drive-in, like, own a drive-in. Okay. It's not that... I mean, if you really think about it, it's not that hard to yeah, make hard. a drive-in. Like, you know, they have in Bishop. Yeah, like, get a big screen... And just kind of like fence it off and just have people park, pay for the parking, and they watch the movie, you know? Oh, you have to get, oh it's that type of driving. Yeah, 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 like watching the movie and stuff like that. And they get like the frequencies on their like uh, cars and everything. I don't think it's that hard to do, but it could be. I might just be like do you dumb. Have a, do you have a space to do it? No. <laughs> it was a thought, you know? It was a thought like, dude, you know, there's not a drive in here in Kingsman. I'm sure if somebody made one, it'd be like, it'd be pretty good. I'm sure a lot of people would go. They would have to play something really good. Yeah, they had to be like popping movies too, like movies that, that are like actually really good. I'll at the just time. like pirate the new movies and <laughs> <laughs> go on one two three movies dot com. That's funny. Or X Y Z. X Y Z movies. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could just put any three letter combo up at the end yeah. of the movie. Yeah. You'll find D-E-F. it. Yeah. yeah. You'll find something. Yeah. Were you that kid that said LMNO or did you actually say L M N O? It's L M N O. Oh, you were one of those. You had no creativity then. It's L M N O. Hello, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Whenever you said Whenever your you ABCs, A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. You know what I'm saying? It's L M N O P. I know it's L M N O P. It's uh I don't know, I guess going up intellectual. What do you mean? I know what it is now. But when I was a kid it was L M N O. I get a little, like basically saying Elameo. Yeah. I don't okay, know. that's all the time we have today, folks. <laughs> and, you know, do you guys want to say anything before we cut this off? Mm, just um. Any words of advice? Inspirational. Um, say like that other guy in the podcast when he was like, "If you want to buy something without looking at the price tag, you gotta work without looking at the time." <laughs> that's actually pretty interesting. Okay, Jared. Uh no, I don't have anything. Anything. Wouldn't come to me for advice. Okay. I'd agree on that too. Okay, well, I guess I'll say something for you, Jared. Thanks, man. Um, love yourself, and if no one loves you, I'll love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Jared. We all love you, Jared. Well, thanks. I love okay. you, guys. And all of our social medias are going to be at Tamuk Delta Kai. If you want to follow, you have any suggestions, or want to hear us talk about something, don't be afraid to text, shoot us a message, and I will definitely love to hear from all of y'all. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye. <laughs>